hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Batman, issue number two. Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, where we last left off on issue number one, Bruce Wayne is back as being the one and only Batman of Gotham. And as Bruce Wayne, he's trying to take more of an initiative in cleaning up Gotham, making it more beautiful and less crime-ridden and more like Metropolis. In addition to that, there was a murder. An individual with several knives thrown and stabbed into his body, the knives having an impression of an owl on them, and Dick Grayson, Nightwing's DNA being underneath the fingertips of the victim. So the question is this, is Dick Grayson getting framed for murder? Is there something more to what's underneath the fingertips of this victim with DNAs uh, of Dick Grayson? Or is Dick betraying Bruce? Well, you're just going to have to read and see. So with that said, let's get into issue number two of Batman. The issue starts off with Bruce Wayne getting thrown out of the window. Yes, Bruce Wayne getting thrown out a window. This is actually the end of the issue. We actually rewind back a day and Batman is chasing down some criminals. Um, he successfully takes them out in a very badass fashion, and he joins up with Commissioner Gordon at the morgue to where uh, the body is getting analyzed. Or he kind of shows up at the morgue. He uses a special computer system to create holograms so that he can be in the Batcave while be able to see what happens in the morgue. Kind of kinky. Just imagine what would happen if that went into the hands of some kind of pervert or some psychopath, what they would do with it. Anyways, um, he looks at the body a little bit more, and him and Commissioner Gordon get into discussion about an old fairy tale, an old legend, a nursery rhyme that's used that talks about the Council of Owls and how they're always out there watching Gotham and watching everyone in them, and if you make one wrong move, they'll... Of course, Bruce doesn't believe in this Council of Owls. He thinks it's just a legend and that he's the only myth that's in Gotham. Then Bruce Wayne goes to meet up with this new candidate running for office, this Lincoln man, and they have a little discussion back and forth. However, while they're having this discussion back and forth about the future of Gotham, a new enemy shows up, and this enemy is sporting the same knives that was in the victim. So the question is this, will Bruce Wayne be able to save himself from falling out a window? Will this member of the Council of Owls take him out? And, in the end, did Dick Grayson betray Batman? Well, you're just going to have to read and see. So let's get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Good. Well, Greg Capolo's art is starting to grow on me some more. While it's not what I would prefer for Batman, I still think it's good art, and it really does set the tone for the comic. The action scenes are fun in this. The key word is fun. There's one point where Batman takes his motorcycle, jumps on top of a, a, a moving train, and then uses the motorcycle and jumps into a helicopter. How badass is that? The villains that are introduced to the Council of Owls, who Scott Snyder has talked about before in interviews, uh, comes off as very ominous, and I like the fact that they're using owls for many reasons. One is because, you know, owl represents the opposite of Batman, like Owl Man, and two, owls are my favorite birds. I think they, they're kind of badass. And the, the bad guy that shows up in this, how he's dressed and how he fights Bruce, it was good. Uh, lastly, the detective work in this was very nice. Um, I liked what was going on with the detective work. I like how Batman was using his mind, you getting the processes of his mind, trying to deduce what happened here and what happened there. Very nice. Bad. Well, the only bad I have to say, and this is not to give out spoilers, but how they handle the Dick Grayson angle is kind of, well, cop out. See, the thing is, is when I read the issue number one and found out Dick Grayson's DNA was underneath the finger, I started to do investigating. Issue number two of, uh, issue number one of Nightwing, Dick Grayson is apparently going around and killing a lot of people, and that's why an assassin is there to take him out. In issue number three of Batgirl, the cover of it, which it hasn't come out yet, shows her knocking out Nightwing. And then issue number four of Nightwing's cover shows him fighting himself. So, I conclude that there's a doppelganger. I feel as though they kind of dropped the Nightwing angle 
but they really didn't. They're kind of just misleading you, which is a good thing, but I would have liked it to be a little bit discussed a little more. Besides that, this was a solid, great issue. Uh, a continuation of what made issue number one good. Uh, a lot more detective work in this, which is good, and I like that. And it felt like a very full issue. Uh, I took my time reading this, and I enjoyed every bit of it. A definite recommendation. Scott Snyder is knocking the ball out of the park, flying up, grabbing the ball, knocking it back to the park, flying back there, and knocking it out of the park again. This is great Batman writing, and that's what I want to see. Um, five out of five. Great issue. Definitely recommend picking it up. Um, I really look forward to the villains in this, and I really look forward to where the story is going with this. With that said, I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.